If you're ready to get more organized with your social media posts, you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be going into detail about how I structured a social media database within the Airtable software. Specifically, I'm solving the problems for podcasters here, but the same ideas, the same concepts can be applied to pretty much any industry and any niche. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, check out our website. I will include links below. Don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course it teaches you how to get up to speed quickly and easily using the Airtable software. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video. Now, let me preface by saying this is going to be a two parter. So part one here, we're going to be talking about how to structure the database itself inside of Airtable. And in part two, in an upcoming video, I will be releasing all of the different automated processes that are, you know, around this very database. But let's just jump into how we've structured this and why. So first and foremost, as I mentioned, I'm taking the perspective of we are a podcast. And so if we have a podcast, we have these different assets, but each asset is its own episode, right? Now, all businesses have some sort of asset that they create with their content. So if you don't have a podcast, but maybe you have a YouTube channel or you have a blog or something else, you know, whatever that is, that is going to take the place of your episodes table. So let's jump into episodes and talk about at a high level what this is. So again, high level, we're going to have a title for each asset. Now, each asset is going to be linked to a couple of different things, right? So we're going to have a topic for that asset. Uh, we're going to have the person, you know, if we have a guest in that asset, you know, in, in this case, again, these are podcast episodes. So assuming we have some sort of interview. So who are we interviewing? That's connecting to our people table. Also, were there quotes that were produced from that asset? Because we're going to use that when we create our social media posts, right? So if we have amazing quotes that came out of these different uh, episodes, we want to link to those as well. So that's going to be a different table. Now, of course, we also have this episode link, and this is where I was mentioning every asset, every piece of content you produce, you want to drive people back to a specific part of your business. For example, when I launch this video on YouTube, I'm going to tie it back to my blog and I'm going to want to drive traffic to my blog from this content. And so here I've put in a couple of different blog links. And, uh, you know, we're going to actually pass this on so that when we make our social media posts, it's linking everybody back to where we want them to go. Now, of course, every episode is going to have one or more social media posts, right? So the idea of producing content isn't just to produce content in a vacuum and that's it. You want to produce that content and then share it with the world. And one of the great ways to do that is by social media sharing. So every time we schedule a post, we're going to link it back to this content, this episode in this example, and that way it's going to move forward and link people back to that. Now we also have the guest image lookup here. So every single guest that we have on our podcast, we need an image for them so that we can use that in our social media posts. And you'll see why in a moment, but this information actually lives at the people table and we're able to look it up using that linked relationship. And this is specifically a lookup field. If you want to learn more about lookup fields, we've done videos exactly or specifically on these field types. So let's jump into people. So in this, in this example, I have three different podcast guests that we've brought on, right? We have a first name and a last name, and then we combine those for the full name. We track their email. Now this is important if you need to send messages to people or remind them, Hey, our episode went live. So this is a great way that you can you know, store that information and have it all interrelated. Now they, they might have their own websites, phone numbers, etc. And as I mentioned, this is where we're bringing in those images, right? So Airtable's actually made it really nice for us. Let's say, for example, we added a new uh, person on our podcast. We sign a new guest. We can actually just do a quick guest search here and we can search the web by putting in this person's information. And lo and behold, we're going to see a bunch of images related to that person and we can just, you know, tie to a particular image and upload it right then and there to the database. Makes it really easy. All right, now we're gonna tie to quotes. And quotes are a little funky, so let's talk about how and why they got set up this way. So 
each quote is going to relate to a particular episode. And this is important that these things are living with this particular hierarchy. If you think about it, a guest can come back to the podcast multiple times. You might have multiple episodes of a podcast filmed with one guest. And so for that reason, we want to actually pull the quote directly from a specific episode, right? So we have what we call a one-to-many relationship between people and the episodes that they're featured on. And then we also have a one-to-many relationship between quotes and the episodes. So meaning that one quote is going to relate to a single episode, but a single episode can have multiple quotes come out of it. So in this case, we might have an episode called How to Be a Great Poker uh well, it should be how to be a great poker player featuring Doc Holliday. And then he might have multiple quotes from that episode, as we see here. Now, once we identify the episode, then, of course, we know who the guest was on that episode because we already have that relationship built. And so using that, we can then again look up that guest image. And then, of course, these quotes are also tying to our social media posts as well. Okay, so now let's get into the fun part, and this is where we actually set up and schedule those posts. Now, first I'm taking you on a tour of our cleaned view, and then I'm going to have to get a little more granular into all of the backend logic. There are actually, as you see up here, there are 10 hidden fields in this view, but this is really the pertinent information we need in order to make this thing hum. So specifically, when we create a new social media post, we need to tie it to an asset, so in this case, we're tying it to a specific episode, right? We're saying, well, this podcast episode, which featured this person, needs to uh, take us, you know, th that's what this post is, is all about. Now, we're also going to bring in a quote in our specific case. We're bringing in a quote from that episode as well. So we're linking the post to a quote as well. And then we need to say, well, what social media platform are we posting this on? You know, is it going to be Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn? You know, name your social media platform here. And then we're going to create an image using this post, using this quote for this post. Now, this is an automated process and I'll showcase, you know, how it works. But again, we're not going to go into the automation itself until part two of this. But we have a nice little template, basically, and we can pull in the quote as well as the image of the person who was the guest. And then, of course, we're also going to schedule that post. So setting up a schedule so that this automatically gets posted to whatever social media platform we said at the date and time that we specified. All right. So jumping into our all records, let's take a look at all of those other hidden fields. So we've got a bunch of hidden fields here. First of all, we have the link to the asset and then we have the link to the quote, as we showed earlier. But then we need to look up the person that belonged to this quote. So we need to make sure that the asset that we linked to is the same as the quote that we linked to, right? So if we're linking to a particular episode, of course, it needs to also make sure that the same person whose quote we're using came from that episode. So we'll get to more on that backend logic in just a moment. You know, this is the social media platform, the image post. Now here's the image URL. This image URL is part of the automation. So we're storing the URL as well, just so that we have a record of that. Now we have a webhook here, and this is again part of our automation. We'll go into more detail in part two. This is our button, and our button is using some logic that says, hey, when certain conditions are met, that is that we have an image post, we have, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have an image post, we don't have an image URL, uh, we do, we have assigned a quote, we have assigned an asset. So when, when our specific conditions are met, then we want this button to be available to us, and that's what's going to trigger our automation. I've done some similar uh, webhook type videos in automation before. And again, we're going to cover this more in part two. And then this particular minutes from schedule, uh, this field is going to be used for our trigger that triggers the post automation. Again, more on this in part two, but basically the formula here is saying we want to know what's the difference in minutes between when we've scheduled this automation to run or this post to be made on social media and now. So a date time difference between the scheduled date time and this very moment in time, present that in minutes. So you can see that these examples here were posted for, uh, you know, a day ago, two days ago. And so these minutes are, you know, are past. Now here's where we're looking at that person asset. Let me bring this back over to the other side. So again, this person asset needs to match this person quote. So this, this comes from the asset. 
This one comes from the quote, and we need to make sure that we're not misquoting the wrong person here. All right, so back over here, this match function is just doing a test to see, does the person match the quote? Does the person from the asset match the person to the quote? If so, great. If not, that's a red flag for us. And then we also have uh, the episode URL. If you recall, this lives at the episode level. So now that this particular post is linked to an episode, we're able to look that up. So this is something that we're going to share in our social media post so that when people click on that social media, uh, they go directly to the asset we want to take them to. In this case, our podcast episode. And I've just filled this out with you know some blog uh, URLs as dummy data. We're also looking up the image of the guest. Of course, that's an important component to building the social media asset. And uh, this is where we write a little bit of a formula to look up that guest URL. We've showcased this in many videos in the past, but what we're doing is scraping the URL out of this image uh, field. That way we can pass that URL forward and use it in automation. And again, well, lastly, we're using the guest text here. And the reason for this is we want to know uh, not just the record ID of the guest, but we need to know what the text is. That way we can use that in our automation. So quick teaser for the upcoming part two of this. Let's go ahead and imagine that we set somebody up here inside of our database. And uh, you know, going back here, we say, hey, all right, we're going to schedule uh, an episode. In this case, I'll pick on myself with Gareth Pronovost. And what does he say? Well, maybe he made this cool quote where he says, working at a computer for eight hours a day is a byproduct of the industrial revolution. Businesses that leverage automation have happier employees and are far more productive with fewer, that should have been hours of work. Boom. All right, so that's done. Now that we have the person linked to the quote and the episode, right? We can move forward with scheduling some automation. So again, here's our episode where we had a topic of how to scale a business with automation featuring Gareth Pronovost. Here is the quote that we pulled from that. Here's the guest image. So all of this data is now synced and lives in one place and properly related. So now when we're ready to schedule a social media post that relates to that asset, all we do is add a new post. What's the asset? Well, first of all, we'll probably want to be in that cleaned view. We don't need all the other clutter here. So let's pop into the cleaned view. So here's the asset is going to be this particular um, episode. Select that and let's select the proper quote. Make sure it's the one that comes from Gareth here. And now that our conditions are met, we can create an image. So let's create an image and it's going to use the person and the episode data that we just selected. And by clicking that button, it opens up my webhook and let's give it a moment and cross our fingers that our automation runs appropriately. And there it is. We just saw that image get posted back into our database. And if we open this image up, we see that it's using the quote and it's, you know, in that template, right? So it has the, uh, my wonderful podcast at the top, you know, fill, fill out whatever makes sense for you there. And here we're bringing in the name and the image of that guest. So that's really cool. We don't have to go and manually create that. Now all we need to do is set it up and say, we want this to go to Twitter and maybe it's scheduled for this day and time. And then that post is going to automatically be posted to Twitter at the date and time we specified. More on that in part two. Can't wait to follow up with more on this soon. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we've put together a lot of resources on our website. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will be delivered to your inbox and get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. And if you're looking for something more complex, we do offer hourly consulting and courses and full-blown development. So swing on by and let us know how we can help you further. Look forward to hearing from you soon.